leaked emails have unmasked some of the donors of the CR17 campaign. News24 has published several emails in the names of the people who the president's campaign managers approached to fund his ANC presidential campaign. The publication says these emails have been verified. The emails appear to suggest that President Ramaphosa had knowledge on the activities of his funding campaign. Last month, the public protector found the president violated his executive ethics code by misleading parliament on a 500,000 rand donation by Bosasa. In her report, she also makes mention of the emails. How exactly these emails were accessed is unknown. The private emails could have been hacked. It shows the president had regular updates in his campaign managers. It says an email in its position shows the president was consulted by his campaign managers about plans to approach several donors. And that public enterprises minister, Pravin Gordon, who's currently at loggerheads with the public protector, was central in raising some of these funds. Now, the presidency, ANC and campaign managers were not available to comment. But to discuss this matter further is Ongama Mtimka, political analyst at Nelson Mandela University. A very good evening to you, Ongama, and thank you so much for speaking to us. So I'm just curious, what is more intriguing to you, the contents of the email or the fact that they've been leaked? Um, uh, thank you, uh, So um, the, the contents of the email, from the point of view that they help uh, throw some light on... Uh, the, the, the campaign, and that's important, regardless from a public interest point of view and formulating opinions about uh, what, 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 what's beneath the surface, it's important. But in terms of uh, the legalities and the fact that it, it may be, it, it is argued uh, to have been among the sources uh, that Busisu uh, Mkwebane uh, used, there you are going to see a, a little bit of a challenge. But from a public interest point of view, uh, I think the, this is no less uh, important than the Gupta emails, for example, in terms of helping us to understand, if true, uh, the links uh, and, and some of the key people that are funding these campaigns. There's always, always a, 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 a need in a democracy for the opening up of party funding. It's unfortunate for the president that uh, he unfairly is the one who now is accounting as opposed to everybody else who's running campaigns. But uh, uh, that notwithstanding, it shows why it's important uh, for, for political parties to be transparent and open about who funds their campaigns. Not mm -hmm. just uh, the president, but uh, also uh, those who have gotten into parliament and in, and, 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 and in government. But this is explosive because among those lists are, of donors are people alleged, who allegedly played roles of uh, sanctions busting during the uh, time that the, 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 the South Africa uh, apartheid government was under san international sanctions. So to have those among the key funders is not going to aid the political uh, fortunes of the president. All right. So Angama will look at some of the people who are alleged to have been uh, the donors and their response. But firstly, is this the smoking gun that the public protector has been looking for in convincing those who've been critical of her report on Ramaphosa? But the fact that he knew and the amount of money that was involved in the fundraising for his campaign... It's a yeah. It, 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 it probably is. I'd be worried though if I was her to only have relied on this, especially if the the means in which it was uh, 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 obtained uh, was was illegal. My hope is that she was able to draw her conclusions independently of these emails. And um, so she and 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 in her report, by the way. She only limits how she arrives at the decision that the president misled parliament on two things. One, she says the president that gave contradictory responses. And secondly, uh, it, she makes something about the president having admitted. I didn't know what the nature and circumstances of that admission. But So, so, so it seems to me that her report uh, does seem to stand on its own merits uh, especially on the issue of the knowledge of the president 
or of who funded his campaign. It, 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 her, her case may stand even without these emails. If she relied on these emails, then uh, it would be it would be very bad for her office. Because remember, unlike the media, uh, she is a legal professional. So by that you are saying the fact that they were attained illegally because it's clear from uh, the correspondence here that the CR17 campaign managers say um, apparently that they do not deny the authenticity of the text, but the fact that they believe that their correspondence was intercepted, is that what you mean, that it would be dangerous for her to have relied solely on this information? In her report, uh, the, 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 the large sections that I've read, she doesn't seem to rely on these emails, etc. So that's the point that I'm making. But if you look at the confidence levels she's had, it does suggest that uh, uh, perhaps she may have been aware of uh, correspondence of this nature. Okay. But she was, I, 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 it's good. The, fa the fact that she did not use that as the basis to make the conclusion, at least in her report, uh, suggests that she was careful. And okay, so I want us, Ongama, to deal with face value. So the public protector had warned at some point in her report that Ramaphosa may have been captured by private donors. Do these leaked emails support this point of view? Well, this is what we would need in order to prove capture that there are decisions which have been taken by his administration when he, 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 he had influence over decisions while he was deputy president which favored these interests and then we would also need to show that post the 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 assumption of office by the president that there are decisions which were taken which favored the business interests of these so for state capture uh, you need to prove a lot more because remember, uh, political parties would not be funded. It's not illegal to fund political parties in South Africa. What's illegal is to get uh, rewards from the state as a result of funding political parties, which is what the issue was with the Guptas. The idea that there was undue influence. And to prove that, it's going to take a lot than, uh, than, 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 than just the appearance of uh, a, a permissive environment for that thing to take place. And if you go back to what the public protector says, she's saying at least the risk of state capture is substantiated in her report, which suggests that she may have not wanted to draw a, or, or she may not have had evidence that in fact there were undue influence by these business people. She only goes to the extent of saying a risk for state capture existed. So some of the names that are allegedly linked to this, uh, just in terms of people who would have received um, uh, favours in return for donations, uh, as the speculation is, Stavros Nikolaou, for instance, Tony Georgiadis. These are just some of the names that have been brought up. Is this concerning if money did indeed come from these people? Uh, one of them is said to have aided the apartheid government in busting sanctions and shipping oil to an, uh, into the country at a time when this uh, was uh, not allowed internationally and in, in doing so undermined the cause of the ANC. That, to me, is the most uh, politically uh, sensitive uh, source of funding. But uh, it, it, it's interesting that post-democracy, People who played uh, roles which were not aiding the cause of the ANC have gone on to, in fact, uh, 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 play in the in the in, in uh, uh, there are a lot more people who've who've sw sw switched sides or who are uh, dubious characters who've gone on to finance the ANC. The point is that President Zuma, at some stage, uh, I think it was 2014, if not 2015, made the suggestion that. In the business culture of South Africa, to finance the ANC, uh, and one would argue it's 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 it's, it's succession campaigns mm. was a wise thing to do, uh, and and uh, because it, for some reason it translated into a, a, a good fortunes 
uh, for a business that did so. And I'm making this inference because in that speech which the pres uh, for then president made, he, uh, he, he, he says that if you didn't finance the ANC, uh, you were uh, putting your business in danger. So this may be just a, a, a case of business people in financing ANC campaigns with no interest whatsoever. And uh, my argument is that the interest will be seen in evidence, not okay. by the appearance of it. So let's talk about appearances and validity, the veracity of these emails. Uh, some of you, like Sir Mick Davis, who allegedly was asked to coordinate a group of London uh, funders, including Martin Marshall, has denied any knowledge of this, has denied ever being approached to talk about this. In fact, quite a number of the people named here have denied even making donations to the CR17 campaign. What do we make of this? Well, here's the thing, though. Uh, if they're truthful, then the case closed. But if not, the assumption would be that there is the, uh, 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 Mususu M. Kwebane has followed the money and the, invest, the further investigation that gets to be done by the uh, prosecuting uh, agencies may just uh, get to, it will be the final uh, word on this. Mm. It won't be denials or acceptances by, by people. I think in the interim, those denials uh, may serve to stymie political moves uh, against the president in the immediate term. Mm. But if true, at some stage, they are going to influence, uh, uh, they, 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 they will be proved true mm. or false, in which case then, the effect we, or the consequences that flow from so, uh, such uh, verification will, 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 will take effect regardless of when it gets to be done. So Ngama at the beginning of the conversation used the word explosive when discussing what the potential this has on the political landscape. The fact that Private Gordon has been named as being central to the CR17 fundraising, he himself has admitted that he was part of it. Is this also the powder keg that will further uh, explode the current political landscape, including debates on whether or not he is being protected by so-called Stratcom media or those within the ANC who want to shore up CR17 and his tenure? Yeah, so, so, so for me, this puts the president back in, in chess language check position, in a threatened position, and it's something which they don't need to take lightly, they need to respond to. Um, I think about uh, four weeks or so ago, uh, his campaign, or people who speak on behalf of his campaign, had raised some degree of awareness that uh, they are aware it, 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 that whatever the findings of the public protector might be bad, m m might be bad, given the fact that she they had received the the paper trail of of, of the money flows, and they suspected at the time that uh, there they, they were there, there could be reasons for concern. Now, mm. it, what what for me is going to be an issue is whether how the courts will interpret and will go through the maze of evidence here. Yeah, in ways that further weaken the president. Politically, they, they may not need uh, uh, for any further uh, uh, verification of this because the president has got a lot of people that are paying for his blood. But I think from a survival point of view, his chances are still uh, uh, there to survive because uh, the, the, the ANC, I don't think they'll be able to marshal enough a majority at this stage because it is a divided house, should they need to push motions of All no right. confidence. So, Ongama, government. final question. I'd like you to comment on this. The DA leader, Musi Maimani, is saying, following these revelations, he believes that it's an opportunity for the, SA, for the ANC to split between those who fight corruption and those who are opposed to it. What are your thoughts on this? What these show is that the binaries that we use as well as the placing of people in either the hero or villain uh, side, is much more complex than we would love. It's much more complex than the emergent media narratives or, or what's known in the public domain. And, 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 and while this, these revelations are unfair in the sense that they, they, put the pre only, they show only the side of the president, they help problematize what we have thought 
is a neat categorization within the ANC politics as to who falls where between heroes and villains in, in the story of state capture and the correction thereof. Ongama, thank you so much for your time. Ongama Ndinka is a political analyst at the Nelson Mandela University. So we've been asking for your points of view, our question following the leaked emails revealing some of Ramaphosa's ICR-17 campaign donors. Do you think the president should play open cards? These are the questions we're asking. Let's take a look at your responses on Twitter. Nelly Swa saying that now would be the time for him to come out of the closet, own up to his lies. This guy sold us a carrot, a ripe carrot. Are we ever going to get a squeaky clean president? South Africa needs leadership. Terence D. Jacob says, thank God for ANC New Dawn rules, period. Anything else is likened unto apartheid oppression, black races against black citizens. Guys who world experience says he must step down immediately. Terence says all political parties should play open cards with donor funds. If not, then it's, then it's simply called politicking. Same one, another one from Nelly. So now would be the time for him to come out of the closet. We've read this one before. Let's move on then. Thank you so much for those uh, tweets. Uh, do keep them coming. Send us your voice notes as well. Video call us if you'd like to share your point of view on this. Explosive emails coming out and we're asking you, do you believe that it's time now for the president to play open cards? We'll be back right after the break.